right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Honor, and welcome to another exciting video and a new episode of Litigation Whiteboard. All right, I had a special request to discuss counterclaims and cross claims. What's the difference? How does it work in real life? Without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve Litigation Whiteboard. All right. So we're up here. Thank you guys. I haven't been around for a while. Been embroiled in a trade secret litigation, working hard, and finally have some free time. So I appreciate your patience. We are talking today about counterclaims, and we are talking about how that works with cross complaints. And so let's just take a look. Here's my litigant, my litigants for today's uh, session. We have our plaintiff over here. Plaintiff files a lawsuit. Maybe it's for a breach of contract, that you breached a contract. So the defendant is, be, becomes the defendant in that case. The defendant has options. Number one, the defendant can file a motion to dismiss. There's a variety of grounds. Uh, it may also be called a demur. If you're, in, for example, in state court, may be called a demur. In federal court, may be called a motion to dismiss. That actually will be called a motion to dismiss. Um, defendant can then either do that or they can say, we're going to answer the complaint and assert affirmative defenses. So answer and affirmative defenses. That's very typical of what you may see. Okay. If you don't see a motion to dismiss, they can also at the same time do other things as well. For example, they can file a countersuit. What's a countersuit? That's going back against this original complainant the original plaintiff saying, well, you're su suing me for breach of contract. Well, I wasn't the breaching party. It was a minor breach on my end, and you should have continued your, per your performance. I am going to sue you for breach of contract. And we would call this a countersuit, counterclaim it may be called. Check your jurisdiction, your local rules. And this, this counterclaim may be mandatory, meaning you must bring it in this case or you may not ever be able to bring it again. That's under the principle of res judicata, issues that were litigated or which could have been litigated are waived for future cases. So you need to be careful. You need to check always, do I have a mandatory counterclaim? I have STO here, what does that stand for? Sometimes we refer to that as the same transaction or occurrence. So if you have the same evidence here, the same, uh, causes the, the same claims and factual disputes. This may be a mandatory counterclaim that you need to raise, the same transaction or occurrence. What sometimes we also call CNOF, a common nucleus of operative fact. Common nucleus of operative fact. If so, you may have to bring this claim. For example, breach of contract. It could be some kind of tort related to this. It could be a lot of different things, okay? But just always ask yourself, do I have a mandatory counterclaim? Next, it could be a permissive counterclaim. This is something that may not necessarily be the same transaction and occurrence. For example, maybe between these two parties, they had a copyright infringement dispute. And they're going, oh, now you're suing me for this contract. Well... I had this claim that I hadn't, hadn't been planning on suing just yet, but you're going to sue me. So I have a permissive counterclaim. It's not the same transaction and occurrence that relate to the breach of contract action. But since we're all here for judicial economy, judicial efficiency, why don't we just have it all heard here, okay? So you have permissive counterclaims and you have mandatory counterclaims, okay? In an action, and we'll have a um, little sample there for you, what it looks like in your pleading papers. The count person who is countersuing, that will become the defendant. We know they're the defendant. And they will also be the counterclaimant. It usually is the term you see, counterclaimant. And the plaintiff will now become the plaintiff, but also the counter defendant. So they're both the plaintiff and the counter defendant. That's how it looks. So it gets kind of confusing when you're having a lot of counterclaims and a lot of cross claims in your action. But, you know, sometimes you got to get them in there and just you got to roll with the punches. OK, next. So that is let's check the box. Whoops. <laughs> let's check the box on that one. So you could file a countersuit. 
if you didn't do your answer, motion to dismiss, answer affirmative defenses. You can also file a cross complaint. Well, what's that? Cross complaint is a claim against a third party. It's not the plaintiff. It's not you. It's some third party that you're saying, well, wait a second. If you're suing me for breach of contract, it's not my fault I breached the contract. It's this guy's fault. This company, a third party. We're not going to let them off the hook. It's the same same issues here. I'm going to sue them. I'm going to cross claim against a third party. Bring them in. File a complaint. Summons and complaint. Bring them in. Serve them. Make them come in and answer. Okay, when this happens, now what happens? We have the defendant is the also the third party plaintiff. The defendant is also the counterclaimant and the third party plaintiff against this party. And then this party becomes the third party defendant. Now they have the same thing. Answer, raise affirmative defenses, motion to dismiss or demur. Or if there's something even more related, they could bring in another party and on and on and on it goes. Where it ends, nobody knows. <laughs> so anyway, guys, this is general legal information only and not legal advice. That's a general overview of what counterclaims and cross claims look like. Again, if you need legal help, civil litigation, attorneysteve.com, civil litigation, technology cases, intellectual property, copyright law. You know where to find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. Thanks for listening. Hey, I got a lot more great videos coming. Make sure to subscribe and oh. Don't forget, talk to you later. Bye now.